Right. Now, our next guest has taken many punches in the boxing ring before, but when Curtis Woodhouse was abused online, he took matters into his own hands. Well, we'll be talking to Curtis in just a moment, but first, let's see how he got his own back on his anonymous attacker. After losing his English light welterweight title last week, boxer Curtis Woodhouse received abusive tweets from an online troll who said he should retire and called him a disgrace. Enraged, Woodhouse appealed to his thousands of followers for the tweeter's identity and address. He then travelled 60 miles from his home near Hull to James O'Brien's street in Sheffield. After the boxer tweeted about his arrival, O'Brien was quick to apologise and admit his wrong. The two never did meet and Curtis Woodhouse later admitted his actions were dark. James O'Brien has since deleted the abusive messages and will probably think twice about his tweets in the future. I would imagine that he would. Curtis Woodhouse joins us now. Now, I'm a huge fan of Twitter. I know you are. It's a, it's a, it's a brilliant thing. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, there is a bit of a dark side, isn't there? Yeah, 99% of the, the things that I deal with on, on Twitter are fantastic. You know, it's mm. a nice way to reach out to boxing fans and have conversations with them. But every now and again, something like this pops up. And right. if you are in the public eye, I don't think it, it's right that you should be abused. Your family should be abused. Your children should be abused. Mm. You know, I don't think anyone's got the right to do that. How long had this been going on for? six seven eight months maybe a little bit longer um, why didn't you just block it well i, I could have just blocked it and, and looking back in hindsight maybe that is something that i should have done but i don't think um the onus is, is on me the onus is on the person that's sending sending the abuse out you know what i mean sure. and was there one tweet or one incident in particular we just thought oh that's it i've had it now. yeah had enough. i was sat on the um the sofa with, with a wife on on monday and the thing is she sometimes used my account as well and she's seen this abuse and it and it worries and scares her, we don't know who this guy is. And well, that's some, the thing, it's and all some, anonymous. Yeah, and some of his threats, I don't know if he's being serious or mm. not. And I was, we were sat there Monday, and he popped up again, and I just seen her face, and I could see that she was worried. So I thought, mm. you know what, enough's enough, I'm going to put a stop to this right now. So, so you jumped in your car yeah. and drove to Sheffield? Yeah, f first of all, I put out um, a Twitter bounty on his head, um, asking anyone, offering anyone a £1,000 if they give me information of where this guy lived. Mm -hmm. And it took under two minutes, somebody sent me a message with a phone, yeah, phone number, so I rang, um, rang the guy up, he gave me all the information, so I typed in his address into my sat-nav, said I was 47 miles away, so I thought, right, on we go. Oh, and what great. were you going to do? I just wanted to explain to him, uh, I was going to knock on his door and tell him this stops today, mm -hmm. um, explain to him what he'd been doing, he'd been upsetting me and my family and my children, and I expected this to stop today, and, and basically give him the fright of his life. Well, uh, James O'Brien has apologised to yeah, you already yeah. on Twitter and he's uh, here with us this morning to make the apology in person. Here he is. Uh, come on come in, James. James. Now, this is the thing about, as we said, it, Twitter can be anonymous, but you got found out. What on earth were you thinking, sending these tweets? What was going on? I answered out now. I was, I was silly, childish. Uh, looking back on it, I realised I've done a wrong thing. Yeah. I, I can only offer my deepest apologies to anyone I've abused on Twitter. Yeah. I've let everyone down, friends, family. And I do really feel embarrassed. Thing is, it's so it's so easy just to send out that tweet because you think you're never going to get nobody's ever going to know. You know, mm. it's, it's easy to do that, isn't it? And how how did you feel when you knew that this man was coming after you? Well, first of all, surprise because it's not your average thing on Twitter. Mm. Secondly, if I'm honest, slightly relieved I wasn't anywhere near the house. Yeah. Uh, you said you'd done it before, so, so, so it was obviously something that happened quite often then. Uh, I have done a few, a, a bit of abuse to other people, but I say I've read back my tweets and I feel really silly. What I've done's wrong. Mm. So, so what do you want to say to, to this man here? Sorry, Curtis. No problems, mate. Like I say, it's a, it takes a big man sometimes to say sorry, and I've, uh, I've done plenty of daft things in my time, so yeah. your apologies are accepted, not problem. Right, thanks. Oh, man. that's really good. Yeah, I'm really pleased we've been able really to sort good. it out. For, for both yeah. of you, that's yeah. fantastic. So yeah. you're going to be really careful what you put on Twitter oh, now. I've learnt my mistakes, so yeah. nothing like this will ever happen again. Well, I know where you live now, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that. He, he actually really does know where you live as well. <laughs> he really does. Oh, I'm so glad that it's, yeah. it's sorted, and thank yeah. you so much. And like I say, it does take a big man yeah. to apologise. Good on you. It really does. Right. Thank you both. Nice Very to much see you. Indeed. Yeah, thank Good you. to see you. Thank you. Coming up after the break are Gavin and Stacey.